Welcome to Focus on Faith, the program that brings you portraits of faith from across the nation. Join us as we bring you the faith of men and women from all walks of life who truly represent the spirit of America as we focus on faith. Today, Focus on Faith presents to you an exclusive introduction to financial mastermind Robert Rockwell from Jacksonville, Florida, a successful young man who has traveled the complex business roads to be recognized as a respected industrial expert. By aggressively attacking and accentuating a positive attitude in every aspect of business, he has developed his companies into multi-million dollar corporations. His unusual attitudes in business matters, his extraordinary board of directors, and a unique operating manual all are cause to pause and reflect on the success this man has achieved. Let's uncover what is exactly at the foundation of Robert Rockwell's business adventures. Focus on faith. Uh, we look at various cities in the state uh, and we try to determine the primary growth corridors of that city. And then after we determine the growth corridor, we try to define which products are going to be needed. You know, how can we build that economic tax base? What can we do for the good of the city uh, to create more industry, uh, more income, more jobs? And how can that be done in the, in the smartest fashion? Once we decide on the products, then we, of course, we have to buy the land. Uh, that's one of the most difficult parts because uh, we're very uh, particular and uh, we're very thorough. And so once we buy the land, uh, then we try to decide which kind of project would best be based upon the products that are needed. We do mostly planned projects. Mm -hmm. Well, as you spoke at a very fine banquet the other day, you uh, gave out quite an astronomical figure of a $300 million dollar development that you're involved in. What's yeah. that about? Well, Gordon, the project uh, that we're going through the uh, approval stages for right now uh, is in Jacksonville here, and the total build-out, once the project is complete, will be approximately $300 million. So we feel, obviously, it's going to provide several thousand jobs, and hopefully it's going to do a lot for Jacksonville and be something Jacksonville uh, can be proud of, and of course we're doing it for the glory of God also. Well, Bob, you surely are more than a workaholic, and with all the high pressures in the professional world of your extreme responsibilities, there must be many difficulties that you've had to overcome and to keep your equilibrium and sanity without resorting to alcohol and drugs, as so many have been doing. Well, yes, Gordon, there there's there's an awesome amount of pressure. I think any real estate investor or initiator of large projects as myself will tell you that the, the pressure is awesome. There's a lot of uh, unique people uh, in our business. Uh, there's a, a lot of bureaucracy uh, which you have to you know uh, go through. There's a lot of permitting. It takes several years sometimes to get projects approved. Sometimes it seems like you have mountains that can't be climbed, but uh, we know that God tells us that we can climb those mountains, and we just maintain steadfast in our faith. Uh, Gordon, we try to keep uh, perspective. Yes, we do have times when it seems like we're about to get discouraged, and what we do is we just go into prayer, and all of a sudden we, we, we understand that, well, the... The, the real perspective is to keep our eyes on Jesus and to keep our eyes on our goals and as God tells us, everything is possible. What can you say to a man or a woman out there that feels destitute almost, discouraged, the bottom is dropped out? If there are anybody out there that is experiencing something difficult now, be it financially uh, or with their marriage or anything else, uh, what the first thing they can do is just get real close to God. Just mm -hmm. learn to know Jesus as a real brother and, and let him just 
let, have him just be there every day, uh, seek the Word. I think the Word of God, uh, the Holy Bible has meant, well, more to me even in the last two or three years, Gordon, than it ever did. So I think we have to learn to operate in the Word, uh, and we have to learn what does God say about difficulties? Mm -hmm. You know, what does God say about tough times? Mm -hmm. uh, th these aren't new just to us. I mean, uh, they've been experienced uh, since creation. And, and there's good in all that, but we have to maintain positive, uh, and maintain a positive attitude and, and just seek God's guidance. And uh, there's, there's, there's always a way out, and of course that way is with a true relationship to mm -hmm. Jesus. Bob, this may sound a little humorous, but uh, I understand your professional career. In fact, your entire life started out on a three-legged stool. How about that? Yes, that's true. A uh, three-legged stool is a good description. Uh, I was born, uh, Gordon, on a dairy farm. On a dairy uh, farm. In the foothills of the Allegheny Mountains in Pennsylvania. And it was a blessed experience. Uh, looking back, Gordon, uh, uh, it taught me to work very hard. We got up uh, every morning uh, and did a lot of work. We did a lot of work at night. It, For sure. it taught us the value of the family unit. <laughs> and I think more than anything, it taught me that all the people we deal with every day, Gordon, have so much to offer us, not just the presidents and the chairmen of the companies, but everybody is here for a reason. And uh, the key is that we're all answering our calling. But I learned so much from the people on the farm and worked with us on the farm. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I really treasure that experience. Bob, what about your family? You alluded to your family and that Pennsylvania farm and a dear dad and mother. Could you share a little with us on that score? Sure, I had a wonderful uh, family. My father was just a very fine father. He taught us all to work, you know, and my mother was, it was, a, it was a basic farm family where you, uh, you know, everybody was close-knit uh -huh. and uh, good food, good meals, and everybody cared and, and loved uh, one another, and I think that's so important. Now, when we walked into your executive office today, Bob Rockwell, your secretary graciously greeted us and showed us uh, with the answer to a question about a candle burning <laughs> here in your executive suite. How about that candle burning? What's that all about? Well, the first person in the office every morning lights that candle. Gordon, and the last one to leave, of course, <coughs> puts it out. And basically, uh, that candle, we like to tell everybody uh, that it means a lot to us. It's, it's significant of the light of God. And, of course, Jesus is the light of the world. And uh, we like to remind everybody that that's our focus. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the candle has to remind us. As you know, we're in a a very hectic end of the business world and it helps us to, 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 to continue to delight in the Lord as they say in Psalm 37 4 delight in the Lord and he'll give us the desires of our heart and uh, it's important I think in when we're out here operating in the world that, that that God is able to give us the desires of our heart and not the world we understand you have a most unusual board of directors here in your corporation. Can you tell us about that? Well, Gordon, we, uh, we have a sculpture of the Last uh, Supper. Uh, and everyone, when anybody walks into our office, that's the first thing they see. And, and we tell everybody that that, in fact, uh, is our board of directors. Uh, I feel what, a, what better board of directors could you have than the disciples and, of course, uh, the wonderful man in the center is uh, Jesus Christ, and of course he is the chairman of the board of uh, each of my companies. <laughs> and I figure that uh, what better chairman could you have than someone who is omniscient, all-knowing, uh, omnipresent with us at all times, and omnipotent, all-powerful. Bob Rockwell, may we have a personal focus of your faith? I was always climbing to the top. Uh, it's a uh, in high school, I was always climbing for perfection, seeking perfection, uh, searching for something, Gordon. And I was very successful in uh, basketball and football and student government and Eagle Scout and the Boy Scouts. And then I went on to college, and it was the same type situation. I was always climbing to the top. I was always seeking something. 
and I was in who's who and American students and universities and chairman of the student counselors and and I was just climbing and seeking and as a naval officer the same uh, same type situation but it was when I was 30 years old Gordon that uh, basically my whole life uh, flashed before me and it was because of a young lady I was dating she was a terrific witness. She gave me books that I pretended I didn't read, but I read them. They were about being born again, being, you know, with Jesus. And she gave me a cross to wear around my neck. I pretended I wasn't going to wear it, but I tell you I did. And basically what happened is uh, one night I found myself on my hands and knees and just really uh, asking Jesus to come into my life. I knew about Jesus before that, Gordon, but I didn't know Jesus as a person you know, and I and said the sinner's prayer, and I invited him into my life, and, and it was an, a, an amazing experience, Gordon. Uh, everything kind of turned white, and I wept. Uh, obviously, my soul did need cleansing. And I realized at that time, Gordon, that basically what I was searching for, what I was climbing for, was not something, but it was somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, it was that person. It was Jesus Christ. And... And I didn't have to pay for it, Gordon. I didn't have to climb for it. I didn't have to strive for it. All I had to do is get on my knees and pray for it. Mm -hmm. And certainly you recommend this to everyone else. I recommend that to absolutely everybody. Jesus just means everything to me, and I try to focus on doing my business every day the way he would want me to do it uh, and in the way he would want me to do it. Uh, I keep the Holy Bible. Uh, right here, out front, in the reception area, as well as in my office, as well as in the back seat of my Jaguar. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just refer to it so often, because I think, as you know, uh, Romans 10:17 tells us that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And I just think it's very, very important that we, we c- continue to focus uh, on Jesus and on on the way God wants us to operate in the Word every day. Bob Rockwell, that's intensely personal. We thank you for a very positive focus on your faith. Now, you quote the Bible, you read it daily, as you've said. Out of the entire book, do you have a favorite scripture passage? Yes, Gordon, I do. I think my favorite scripture uh, today uh, is James 1.22. Uh, where God's telling us, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, lest we deceive our own selves. And and what this means to me, uh, Gordon, is that basically God's telling us not just to talk to talk, but we must walk the walk. Mm -hmm. God's telling us that Christianity is not a a spectator sport. It's a participating commission. Mm -hmm. And the Great Commission means more to me every day, Gordon. You know, I was commissioned by the President of the United States as a naval officer, and that meant a great deal to me. But, you know, uh, in the Great Commission, I was commissioned by God. You know, the very God who we say and we claim and we know is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the omniscient, the omnipotent, omnipresent God. And that just means so much to me, Gordon. Uh, You know, God, our Creator, and, and Jesus, you know, our... A redeemer and a Holy Spirit, our sustainer. That's who gave us the Great Commission. So I try every day to ask myself, am I fulfilling that Great Commission? Thank you for joining us today with our sincere hope that you have been blessed and encouraged with this focus on faith, timeless testimony. Now, friend, if you want to see more of these unique videos, then don't forget to leave a thumbs up and of course don't forget to subscribe in order to never again miss any of the upcoming timeless testimonies. By you simply caring and sharing this unique series of programs that will greatly help our channel to reach many more people with these personal testimonies. Now in closing, today's timeless testimony may have impacted someone out there and God is speaking to you right now And that person wants to commit their life to follow Christ. Friend, I would encourage you to start by reading your Bible and to begin to practice what the Bible says. And I pray that you will get strong in the desire to go out and find a good Bible teaching church to join. 
and to not let yourself get distracted, but rather you will make this a priority in your life to seek God's will for a new life in Christ. Now, if you want to know more about having a more abundant and fulfilling life, then this booklet, Beginning with Christ by Navigators International, is a great way to get started, and I want to send this to you absolutely free. If you'll just call 1-800-28-FAITH, that's right, just call 1-800-28-FAITH, and I will be happy to send this to you free. Just leave your name and address and I will mail it out directly. Or if you prefer, you can simply email us at info at telemissions.org and request this free booklet there. And if you have a specific prayer request, let us know. We will include your request in our daily prayer time. For those of you who would like to know more about Telemissions International and how this unique ministry got started, just visit our website telemissions.org and learn the story of how these many timeless testimonies were recorded in the early 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s and will live on for decades to come. Also, you can purchase a copy of Born to Preach. By the late Dr. Gordon Anderson Sr., this book tells the riveting life story of my father's faith travels, triumphs, and action-packed stories with Alaska wildlife photography and exciting adventures, including on-location interviews with doctors, senators, astronauts, and much, much more. Spanning over his 70-year ministry, this book will captivate and sway the hearts of young and old readers alike. Available on our website, telemissions.org. Check it out. And please don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment on our website and tell your friends about this new and exciting series of programs. We all know the power of a personal testimony and this and many more classic testimonies like this will continue to spread the light, helping others around the world through God's lighthouse. Now, this picture you see of the lighthouse on the stormy shores of the Outer Banks is our hallmark signifying the importance of Telemissions International reaching out to multitudes for Christ. Just think of it, friend, every timeless testimony that is being broadcast is like a beacon of light beaming out the good news on the stormy shores of cyberspace for decades to come. Well, thanks again for joining us today. This is Dr. Gordon Anderson, Jr. sharing with you our prayer promise, which is Psalm 121, verse 2. And it says, My help cometh from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And friend, remember to start every day in prayer. Now God's richest blessings as you focus your faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. Basically, God's telling us not just to talk the talk, but we must walk the walk. God's telling us that Christianity is not a, a spectator sport. It's a participating commission. And the Great Commission means more to me every day, Gordon. You know, I was commissioned by the President of the United States as a naval officer, and that meant a great deal to me. But you know, uh, the great, in the Great Commission, I was commissioned by God. You know, the very God who we say, and we claim, and we know, is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end the omniscient, the omnipotent, omnipresent God. And that just means so much to me, Gordon.